<clears throat> Welcome traders to this week's live trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Uh, before we get going here, uh, in the next 30 seconds or so, uh, can you just uh, type a Y in the chat box if you can hear me loud and clear and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen? Why in the chat box? Just to let me know that uh, we are good to go. Thanks very much. Okay, so that is 2 p.m. GMT. We, uh, we're out of British summertime now. Um, okay, so before I get going with today's um, presentation, I just want to with respect to if you have any questions uh, during the presentation, if you can just make a note of them and I'll open up a Q&A at the end of the presentation uh, for any questions regarding the charts that I've shared with you today and or any um, instrument you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in the, in the presentation. Uh, before we get going, it's important that we adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly, and uh, relevant to today is that any views expressed by me here today are solely mine, they're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Let me just turn off this news wire in the background there, it's irritating. Um, so for those of you who are here for the first time today, just a brief introduction to myself. My name, like I say, is Patrick Munley. After I graduated uh, from King's College London, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. So essentially I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500 or more appropriately day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, the beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, basically giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of about 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused purely on financial gains to becoming process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing solely on managing my mind, uh, on what I could make for the markets and focus more on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you are simply playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate its, itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has uh, delivered annual profit profitable returns since uh, 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in uh, some other market-orientated projects. I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell. 
Uh, I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I think we've got an example of one of those here. Let's go to the blog. And where are we? So here's today's daily market outlook. Provide a breakdown of what happens, what's happened in the overnight market, what we're looking at for the day ahead, options that are in play. And then I look at some of the FX majors and give some insights into what's going on with them. So you can access that through, uh, through the blog there and you can sign up to receive that as a newsletter on a, on a daily basis. I also uh, am now sharing uh, trades into um, this Ticknell account on TradingView. So you can get, on average, I share about three to five setups that I'm tracking on a daily basis. Um, I'll just post a link into the chat there so you can uh, you can subscribe or follow uh, that, uh, those trades and you get automatic alerts as to when I uh, when I post a new a new update there. So uh, they're certainly worth in terms of learning how to uh, professionally approach the markets and have a consistent strategy to trading. Um, you can glean some deep, pretty good information um, from those. And then I guess um, most recently, I've, uh, I've been tasked with running Ticknell's rapidly growing e-mini strategy group. Now, this is a private Facebook group where I share, on a daily basis, I share a trade plan for the New York cash session. That begins at 2.30 UK time. And, um, and I set out a plan. I give uh, trade levels that I'm watching. Let me see, have a look here at an example. From yesterday, this was yesterday's plan. It's a sh short video, uh, precise levels that I'm looking to engage in the market with, and um, and you can access that. I also post some institutional insights as well in there. You can see just this morning uh, some some research from Bank of America uh, regarding the S and P and the yield spikes that we're currently seeing. And for those traders that want to take things a step further and really get serious about trading the uh, the mini S and P. We've now opened up a um, a Telegram private Telegram group where, uh, during Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I am live streaming uh, trading, live trading uh, through a live stream and a, a screen share uh, through the opening hour of the cash session in New York, and then I provide updates uh, throughout the day as to trades that I'm taking or positions I'm in and how I'm managing those. Um, since we've been since we've been running the, the strategy group since April, um, the setups I've given have provided over thirteen hundred points of, of profit, and uh, and you can see here this month so far we're up eighty five point five points, which equates to four point seven five percent of my accounts. Um, what I'll do is I'll drop the, uh, the strategy group link in there. There's no uh, there's no you, you just request. Uh, request to join and you can access that daily trade plan. So I'll just post that into the chat there. And then uh, if, if, you, if, if anyone wants to, um, to take things, like I say, a step further and, um, and join me in the, uh, in the Telegram, the live Telegram group, um, you can contact me, you can connect with me through uh, LinkedIn and send me a message and we can, uh, we can set that up. I've just posted my LinkedIn profile there into the, into the chat. So that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from and the type of things I have done and am doing consistently. Um, now let's move into uh, the charts and see where the, where the opportunities are that I'm, uh, that I'm currently monitoring. So as usual, we're gonna start with the S&P. This is actually the E-mini S&P, the, the futures contract which basically tracks the S&P 500. So if you can only access the US 500, you just adjust the levels for the spread. Um, so we have a potential uh, wave three high in place. What we were talking about last week was the potential for a symmetry swing. So when I talk about symmetry swing, I'm talking about a price correction that's equal uh, to the wave two. And uh, what we want to do is overlay that versus the uh, potential wave three high, and that gives us a wave four target zone, which would have us trading back down into uh, 46.08 territory. We traded 46.28 on the lows yesterday. 
And then I'm looking for prices to consolidate here. And I'm, uh, then I'm looking for long positions uh, to play for a wave five extension up into this trend line resistance. That would bring us in now, uh, base if, if, if we hold the symmetry swing support, uh, that would put us up at 47.77 into year end. And then I think into January, we'll probably see a, a little bit more of a corrective move before trying to advance again into uh, early 2022. But you'll note we don't have any divergence here on that last high. So that gives confidence in the idea that we're actually trading a, uh, a wave three here as opposed to um, as opposed to a topping pattern, uh, completing a wave five cycle to the upside. So uh, looking to get long uh, playing for that, uh, that upside objective into year end. I'll just pull up the intraday chart here. This is a four hour chart for the uh, Union s and This is a pattern I'm tracking here, looking for a potential triangle play. So we've seen a move back into the pivot here at 46.61. Um, we probably get a bit of a rejection uh, here. And then what I'd look for would be for prices to hold uh, support into, the, let's say, the 40, uh, 46.40 area, uh, and then do a three wave move into the descending trend line resistance. Get that final pullback into the 23.6% uh, retracement of the wave three, which is a minimum requirement in terms of setting up that base for, for the next leg higher. And so then we'll watch for bullish reversal patterns here at the 46.25 if this pattern plays out like I anticipate. Um, and then we'll be looking for that long fifth wave. Uh, and I've labeled it here as, or sorry, I've measured it here as the, the fifth wave, at least equal to the first wave. And so uh, so that's the type of scenario I'm looking at at the moment um, in terms of the Union and S&P. NASDAQ, similar story. We have uh, the potential wave for low in place here now. Let's just draw in what we're looking at. So we have this pattern is what we want to pay attention to. So we're looking for five equals one versus our correction. And let's see if we have symmetry swing here. We do. So we slightly exceeded the wave two in terms of the overlay here, but you can see that tail there, strong reversal. So what we look for now is a break of the trend line here. So we'd be looking for prices to extend through 16,290, and then we'd have a target on the upside then at uh, 16,633. So about uh, three, 350 points to play for there if that pattern plays out. There is the possibility, obviously, that we want to, uh, that we could do a double correction here. When I talk about a double correction, what I mean is that this would actually be our A, A, wave low, we get a B wave here, and then we get a C wave, a quality move. Um, and then we still get that fifth wave extension. That would be a slightly more complex correction. Um, but this, this move at the moment um, certainly potentially has some impulsive qualities. So we'll have to see. Uh, the key is going to be recapturing this descending trend line resistance. And once we're through there, then we should take out the highs and extend up into uh, the fifth wave equality objective. But for now, uh, whilst we hold here, we'll see if we can get this, this advance going to the upside. This is the YM, the E-mini Dow. Um, looking for a, another leg here. Let's draw this in. So what I'm going to suggest is that this is our A wave low. This is our B wave. So I'm looking for one leg lower here in the Dow. And there is an opportunity then to, uh, to get long. So... Ideally, we check up into the pivot, down into the equality objective. And then we'd be looking for a fifth wave extension to the upside. So um, this is one that I'm going to be tracking closely today because I think the setup has, uh, has a very clean structure here in terms of the corrective pattern. Um, let's overlay the trend line versus the current so you see here we could we could run a bit deeper so it could do a double double correction um, which would be this scenario so we get a move into here we get back up into this area and then we get another three wave move down into the trend line support before extending to the upside 
on the basis that this was quite a sharp wave two correction. Uh, if you, the rule of alternation in, um, in Elliott Wave would suggest that we potentially have a more protracted correction, corrected in the wave four after it being a sharp correction in wave two. But that's not necessary. That doesn't necessarily uh, have to be the case. So again, what I'll be, what I look for here in these scenarios is uh, we look for the trend line break to uh, to give us clues as to the strength of the um, of the impulse here. If we have a wave four low in place, we would uh, we'd anticipate a break and then an extension through the prior highs and on to get up into the projected semi trend line resistance, heading towards thirty seven thousand down there. The Russell, Russell 2000, small caps in the US. So again, we have the Russell has potentially, uh, looks like it's completed, what could be its wave four quality objective. So we could have a wave four low in place here. Um, and again, what I'll be looking for to encourage long positions is going to be a break of the trend line that's, uh, that's in play there. So we're going to see a break of the trend line and really get up to challenge this um, B wave high, and then maybe a little bit of consolidation. So this is the type of thing I'll be thinking about up into here, there, through the highs, and uh, and on for the fifth wave, the quality objective. If we are going to suggest this is our one in this cycle, so here. So we get a move up into that 2520 area on uh, on the Russell there. So again, watching that, watch that trend line break, and then for a uh, shallow corrective move to get in on the on the long side. Dax, continues to, uh, to track higher here. What we're looking for now through the highs. So we've got a confirmed bullish sequence. Now what we want to see is what sort of wave structure we have in terms of looking for entry points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven swings. So what we'd I hope for here would be a pop back down into, oops, we'll draw that for you. So we look for a, an extension higher here and a three wave into this channel support to set the base then for the fifth wave extension to the upside. European equity showing uh, some outperformance here. So we can get this, we can get this set up. Then I've been looking at adding to long positions that I've already got running in the DAX here uh, for that extension up into the 16,500, which is the projected sending trend line. Uh, resistance for the current uh, cycle that we're trading in at the moment. Uh, dollar index. So you can see what, sorry, the, the basic theme there with these equity indexes are, I think we're in a corrective phase here. I'm watching for, uh, for some key uh, structure breaks to set up the opportunities to trade on the long side into year end, uh, as we could see a, a melt up here as portfolio managers have to chase performance um, is what uh, is the is the thought process behind all of that? Uh, let's pull up the DXY here. Let's get to the daily time frame. Uh, DXY. So dollar index. Obviously, um, yesterday we got that really hot CPI, and, uh, and the, the market uh, took a bit of a shines in the dollar on the basis that they anticipate uh, tapering is going to be rolled out quicker or potentially even rate hikes. I'm looking now to, to fade this next advance here into this trend lines and we've got the uh, weekly R3 here. So 9550s, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns and I'm going to go short, then looking for a pullback into these prior highs, 9450 areas, so about 100 points to play for there. And then I'm looking for a blowout move to the upside to basically take, test the 50% retracement of the uh, of the prior decline. From there, I'm going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns to go short, looking for a test of this trend line support back down into 93, 95, 
And if we get through there, then that would suggest that this corrective move versus the, uh, versus the impulse to the downside is complete. And we can start to think about the next leg to the downside in terms of the dollar index. However, if we hold this trend line support on any test, then it could be that we're thinking that this, uh, this is actually a wave three and not a corrective pattern. So if it's a wave three, what we'd anticipate is that we get up, uh, we get through the 50% retracement, the pullback would be equal, or we'd be thinking about an, some type of quality objective versus this being our wave, uh, wave two correction. And then we get a further leg of upside in what would ultimately prove to be a five wave advance in, uh, in the dollar index. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So this would be our, obviously our wave one. And, uh, and that, this would be the type of pattern we could anticipate in terms of if we don't, if, if the sellers don't step in at, uh, at the 50% retracement zone and we don't take out the trend line support, then this would be the alternative scenario in terms of the dollar index. And we've got the equal weighted dollar here. This is the dollar uh, versus uh, the Aussie, the Euro, Sterling and the Yen. And you can see we've got the same pattern developing here. So I'm looking to fade this next advance and then we'll see if we can hold these prior highs and support for one more move. Note we've got this nice momentum divergence developing. So this is, uh, we're reaching some pretty interesting inflection points, not only in the dollar index, but in the majors. Let's just jump into a couple of those, the Euro to start with. Looking for a test here into just below 114. And then I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns. I think we can reasonably expect then at least a three wave correction to test the 115.70 trend line. If we can get through there, then I look for a test up into the midpoint of the channel we've been trading in uh, for 117.47. And again, now this is it's important trading information. If we don't hold here, um, then we can start to think that this is actually an, in, an, an impulse to the downside and we've been looking at, uh, at trading it as such. But for now, um, until proven in, in, or, or too or too invalidated, um, we're going to look to play the, the long side. We've got similar situation developing in Sterling here. We've got a nice... Um, let me draw that in. A potential wedge pattern developing here. So we're looking for prices to test down into, um, we're looking for a test. Did we get it? Well, we've all, we pretty much tested it to the pit there. Uh, 133.60, we've got the equality objective versus this swing. Uh, B wave high gives us C at 133.19. So we're in the ballpark here. So I'm gonna be watching for bullish reversal patterns potentially bullish reversal patterns anyway, to look for a three-wave correction. Certainly we think about the pivot at uh, 136.40, and then we've got the trend line resistance coming in 136.93. Equally, if we lose the, uh, the 133 handle um, to the downside, then uh, we look to this high volume mode back down below 130. So that'd be a pretty bearish development, but one that uh, we want to keep an eye on. But for now, we're looking to see if we can hold this zone and, uh, and do something on the long side. Uh, dollar yen, it's held up nicely here from the, uh, the pattern that's, that we were looking at. Um, now again, with the dollar yen, let me just get rid of some of these. This is an important concept to grasp uh, when you're trading these corrections. We can from here, um, I can make this clear. So this was our initial corrective move. So we had an A, B, C, a quality objective, 113.07, which we tested and we found buyers. Now from this area, we can still do, even though we're still technically be in, uh, still be in a bullish sequence, we could still see another leg because this would have then create what uh, Elliott Wavers referred to as a WXY pattern, or I just refer to it more often than not as a complex correction, where you get a double, double correction. Um, so when you get when you're take when you're playing these uh, trades, what you want to make sure is by the time you get halfway back through this leg, through your potential C leg, trade needs to be risk free because then you protect yourself from the potential of this pattern developing. So we actually get another um, leg to the downside, likely complex uh, correction. So 
probably an ABC within there, um, but it's still a bullish structure, and we would, and then we still have that uh, equality objective to the upside coming in at one fifteen eighty. Uh, so it looks bullish now. Key here to really enc encourage the upside is taking out the trend line resistance on a closing basis, and then that gives us additional confirmation and conviction in playing in playing the trade to the long side. Uh, what else have I got here? Let's take a quick look at the cryptos on a tear, obviously. Um, I'm looking for a break now through the prior cycle highs here. So we've got 69, 20, uh, 69,285. There is a pivot, uh, sorry, a Fibonacci um, cluster here at 74,000 to 75,000. So if we don't get another corrective leg here, you want to really be playing the breakout for that target zone. From there, I anticipate we correct back into these prior highs before looking for that extension then to test the projected ascending trend channel resistance up at uh, an eye-watering 81,000 uh, for Bitcoin. So there's some decent two-way opportunities there. I prefer to be long, obviously, because of the, of the current trend. And here we have Ethereum. This is mapping a pretty aggressive wave three here, uh, looking for this to extend up into a 2618 extension of the wave two. Which would uh, which make which would satisfy um, the technical aspects of a wave structure, um, and we've also got then the one six one extension of this leg to the downside. So we've got uh, we've got some confluence here at the six thousand to six thousand one hundred level. As long as we hold this trend channel support, if we lose it, then we look for a three wave move back into support here. The at the that one second get rid of that. At the 38,500, 38, 39,30 area, uh, and then still looking for that, uh, that 5,100, 5,300 test. So a couple of options there to, to track with Ethereum, uh, but certainly as we hold this channel, we look for that 6,000 uh, objective to the upside. Gold broke out nicely yesterday. Now what we're looking for with gold is a two-day close through the, uh, the, break, the breakout level here. So that was our, our breakout yesterday. And now what we're going to see, we closed above it yesterday, another close. That gives us technical confirmation to play a pullback um, back into this support zone here. Maybe we get a recheck of the trend line resistance from above. But then uh, we can re-engage uh, confidently on the long side, certainly thinking about a test of uh, 1918. Let's just see what we've got here in terms of the quality objective. So this swing versus that swing. Yeah, so we've got an equality objective there. 19, yeah, so 1920 will be the next target. If we get this second daily close through here, first pullback is gonna be a buy. And we're going to be targeting a move up into that uh, that projected resistance zone. Um, what else do I want to cover here? Yeah, just quickly look at a couple of these Antipodeans. The Aussie, the Aussie, uh, looking for a test here of the trendline support seventy two forties. And what we ideally like to see is that test coincide with the equity indexes uh, testing their support zones, and then we can see another leg to the upside in the Aussie. Similar story here in the Kiwi. Let's just draw in the trend line. Maybe a slightly deeper pullback here in terms of the Kiwi, but again, any tests into this trend line support uh, should offer an opportunity on the long side, coinciding with the dollar index topping out, as, uh, as I highlighted earlier. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of these yens quickly. Swiss yen um, traded up into that pivot and, um, and held it. So Swiss yen now has the potential to trade down into 122.50, the prior highs here. And then that would offer an opportunity uh, to play the long side again in the Swiss yen. So this type of pattern. And then we look for a five equals one to the upside. So that would be the play there in the Swiss yen, making marginal new highs into that ascending trend line resistance. So watching 122.50 now 
as we held that pivot test yesterday and, uh, and we're coming off again. CAD yen, similar setup here. We've got uh, symmetry swing support. So uh, thinking in terms of uh, wave four equaling wave two at a minimum, that will put us into this um, 90 10 area and watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, looking for another hit of that trend line up towards 93 uh, 48. How are we doing for time? Uh, I'm just right on the, uh, the, the minute basically there to, uh, to conclude this, guys. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a flavor of what it is I'm tracking at the moment, certainly in terms of risk sentiment, looking at these equity indexes, put in a wave four low, and then that should coincide with the dollar reaching, uh, putting in a, a, an in, at least an interim high, and then we should see corrections in terms of, uh, we should see the advance in terms of uh, risk FX pairs, Euro, Sterling, uh, Aussie, and, uh, and the Kiwi are, uh, are ones that I'm watching. And, um, and we're looking for a, a second day close now in gold above that trend line, and then we'll look to play the first pullback on the long side. So that concludes uh, the presentation. Are there any questions? You can either type them into the chat box or you can, uh, there's a Q&A box as well. And um, equally, if you don't have a question, it's just as useful if you type an N in the chat box. I encourage you all to check out the uh, Tickmill uh, Futures group, Facebook group, the closed group there. You just send a membership request and I'll add you in. And like I say, for those that are interested in more active trading in terms of the S&P, uh, you can join me in the Telegram group. Or you do re The requirement there is that you have a Tickmill funded futures account. Any questions? No, okay, I'll take the silence as uh, indicative that I've done a fair job of, uh, of explaining this stuff. I'll, uh, I'll wrap this session up here. Hope to see you in the strategy groups. If not, uh, we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much and I hope this helps.